IGN's review of Need for Speed Payback is damaging to the series we all know and love. While you or I may know that the reviews are total bullshit, many other people might not. If you see my Twitter the couple days ago, you would have seen a full-blown argument between me, Scott Riley, and Richard Walk or Luke Riley. I don't know why I keep calling him Scott Riley. Luke Luke Riley Riley and Richard went way well Walkling, I think. Wankling, Walkling, same thing. Luke being the one behind the IGN review and Richard being the one behind the GameSpot review. Now, these reviews aren't going to keep you or me from buying and playing and enjoying the game. But it's going to keep people who aren't real, who are on the fence. It's going to keep people from potentially playing a great game. And that's why these reviews are so damaging. Like, you or I, the consumer, may not, like, give a shit about the review. But, I mean, I kind of give a shit about the review because it's damaging to the whole series we know and love. But to people in, like, the boardrooms and stuff, like IGN and all of them, they're going to see these reviews and go, pull the plug. Like, this could potentially end Ghost Game. Like, I'm not even joking when I say that. It really well could because two reviewers couldn't be bothered to go and actually review a game properly. And that's what pisses me off the most. And this is why I'm so scared for the series that I know and love. I mean, we've had this happen before. Look at... Look at The Run. The Run was a great game that received lukewarm reviews. Bl Black Box got the pull plug... The pug... What? By EA. EA's just like, nah, you're done. They got restructured, but then they got disbanded a year later. So... If it happened to them, it could easily happen to Ghost. Because our series could be in danger because people just don't aren't bothered to actually review the game properly. That's the problem I have with the IGN review and GameSpot's review. Like you look at someone like Game Rank Game Ranks? Yeah, Game Ranks, their review, his review on Need for Speed Payback, it talks about a lot of the problems. He goes and says he's very critical about the game. But yet, that's a good review because he doesn't complain about stupid shit. He doesn't go and go, ooh, ooh, ooh. he knows what he's talking about because he's played the Need for Speed games. He's reviewed every single one. It's not like just rotation of people like, oh, this sucks. And then the next person comes in and like, oh, this is good. Like, it's not like that. You don't have that because this guy has played every single Need for Speed game. And he goes and reviews every single one when they come out. He did it with 2015. He did it with Payback. He might have done it with Rivals. I'm not sure if he was around when Rivals came out, but still. He's played every single Need for Speed game. And that review was, like, as much as it was pretty um, scathing, it was a good review because he actually, like, talked about fair points and everything. He actually properly reviewed the game despite him giving it an eh, you know? But yet, with IGN's review, they just didn't bother to, like, care at all. They had missed out on customization, multiplayer, like, they missed out on two essential parts of the game. The multiplayer, where he could have even gone in more with, with stuff to talk about. And the customization, he just didn't bother to talk about it. I mean, there are people who can talk about this a lot more in depth, better than I can. So I'm going to be linking, leaving links to Straight Up Hippo, Born, and LP Ripper's videos on the subject matter. Because those people can just talk about it better than I can. Although, what I can talk about is how we can actually fight back against this. Now, there's this website, you've probably all heard of it, called Metacritic. And basically, go on there and leave a review. If you've played the game, go into the user reviews, alright? Go into the user reviews and rate the game. Now, if it's like an 8 or a 9 for you, put a 10 because people are just going to go, oh, 1, zeros. People are giving zeros and 1s for stupid shit. Like, for not liking the story. Like, that doesn't deserve a 0 or a 1. So, if you like it at 8 or 9, put a 10 so it evens out. That's what I did. And also, if you like the game as well and you got it on Amazon, go on Amazon and rate the game a good score if you like the game. Even if you didn't buy it on Amazon, just put it on there because you own the game. You can give a good review of the game if you enjoy the game. It's up to us to actually get our words out because people like IGN and GameSpot, they don't know what they're talking about. And they're reviewing their games because they don't know what they're talking about. And it's reflecting on our game that we truly love. So... It's up to us to actually go out and fight against this tyranny, against this just bullshittery, if you know what I mean. And by doing that, our first way we can do that is through going on Metacritic, going on Amazon, going on any website that allows you to review the game and giving it a good score. Because that way, more the more people who make the reviews go up and the more the reviews are up, they're not gonna, the less they're going to care about the critics who don't give a shit about the game. So if you really want to see the series like 
keep going that's one of our only ways of attack right now that's gonna be all for now thank you guys so much for watching and again this is like one of our only ways we can actually like start to get the game out there and get like people to say hey this is a pretty good game and rating it accordingly it's up to us to do that at this point because the reviewers they don't know what they're talking about but that's all for now i'll see you guys in the next video have a good one